The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 42 of your distance learning session for geology over six science with Kenneth Yosimbon. During our lesson 41, we had some work to do at home. Shall I proceed? by looking at the correction. The first part of the question required that you should draw the diagrammatic illustration of evolutional changes in fossil microstar. In our answer, emphasize on the drawing position. This is the evolved form of fossil microstar with the heart shape. Then, this is the old form or the ancient form. Then this is the recent form structure. This is the position of the anodes. And then, that is the plastron, the plastron. That is the diagrammatic illustration. Remember that the question simply expected that you should draw the diagrammatic illustration of evolutional changes. Take note that you were to draw. If you look at the diagram, you will not see any label there. So emphasis were on the diagram, the drawing position and the different aspects that are supposed to be involved in the evolutionary train for the fossil microstar. The second part of the question required that we should outline, outline the significance of these changes in the fossil microstar. The first part of the question involves improvement in locomotion. Now, there was Increase in the number of tubercles on the plastron, which suggests that there is a strong digging spine. This digging spine helps it to anchor and then guides in its borrowing mode of life. The strong spines also suggest an anchored microstar that is mostly on fine grain sediments. But we underline that most fossils or most organisms are fossilized in fine grain sedimentary rocks. The second significance is the improvement in its feeding habit. Now, the anterior ambulacrum growth fit into the deeper and longer mouth for food particles in suspension to move down. Remember that this positioning helps the organism to stay off from a lot of activities. Then. You can keep the material under a calm environment. Then any other final material in suspension drops and assists in the feeding of 
the organism. Now the mouth moves forward and the anterior ambulacrum growth fits into it. Now, this also enables the gathering of food by the organism. The third significance is improvement in respiration. Now, the petaloid ambulacrum became elongated. The long petals carry more respiratory to feet. Why? This is to help in the extraction of oxygen from oxygenated water. That improved the respiration of the organism at its living state. The fourth significance is the improvement in sanitation. The improvement of or the movement of the periprot away from the epical system and as well as the widening of the fast oil implies that the extraction cilia has been improved and assist in the removal of waste. These are the significance that are involved in the evolutional changes in fossil microstar. We continue with the topic paleontology. Before we've seen the scope of paleontology, the types of fossils, conditions necessary for fossilization, modes of fossilization, occurrence and uses of fossils, gaps in fossil records, classification of fossils. We will concentrate our lesson today on description of fossils. So, our lesson 42 is titled Description of Fossils 9. We will concentrate on the similarities and differences of regular and irregular echinoids. Now today's lesson will look at uh, our lesson objectives, the prerequisites, the real life situation, the lesson activity, look at some exercises, and we shall end with an assignment. Previously, we had seen some different aspects of fossils. So, in our today's lesson, we shall outline the similarities and characteristics, uh, characteristic differences of regular and irregular echinoids. Again, from our lesson in regular and irregular echinoids, we have seen their morphological features. So we will concentrate today to look at those similarities and the differences between regular and irregular echinoids. To understand the differences as well as the similarities of regular and irregular echinoids, it is important to have information on geological basis for classification of fossils. That is, the morphological and the ecological aspects. Very essential for our lesson today. Also, we have seen groups of commonly preserved fossils. The phylum kinodemata uh, is one of them, which is our focus today. So information, the different characteristics are very, very important, without which it will be difficult for us to differentiate as well as give similarities of the two fossil groups in echinoids. A petroleum engineer visits the Bakasi Peninsula in southwest Cameroon. He collected samples of the rocks in different locations and noted many types of fossil shells and fossil traces 
that differ greatly. Now, our concern is what revealed the differences between the fossils? That is, the fossil shells as well as the fossil traces. What is it that he considered in order to bring out these differences? In our hypothesis, is it that he considered the effect of denudational agents on the fossils? That is, the effect of weathering, erosion, uh, transportation. Are there those agents that brought the differences? Was it the idea of gaps in fossil records? Oh, he considered the morphological and the ecological aspects of the fossils. As we go through our lesson, we shall see which of the hypotheses he used to bring out the differences. Now observe shell A and shell B. and identify common and differing features. Take note. You are identifying common and differing features for A and B. You look at A, you will realize that there is a center position that looks like a star. And then there are also spines. Then you have the apical system. Look at the way it is presented. Then for fossil B, a completely, there is complete absence. The fossil shell looks like a heart and is smooth with no spines. Or the spines are not visible as compared to A. Then you have this growth which is not present in A. Now that reveals that fossil A and fossil B are not the same in terms of their shell morphology. This guides us to our lesson on the differences or the similarities of regular and irregular echinoids. Now if you look at our photo again, this is for regular echinoids and then this is uh, for irregular Echinoids. So both shells have a periproach and peristrum. This is the position of the apical system and the position of the apical system. The moment you see this behind should represent the posterior margin where the anus is going to be. That helps, or that develops the periport and the peristrum. So it's common in the two. Also, they both have a five rayed arrangement of body parts. We look at here, this is five rayed, and also here, five rayed. So from the shell form, we can draw those similarities between regular and irregular echinoids. If you look at the shell again, you will notice that they all have corona plates. This is a corona plate. And also here. That is from where now the body radiates. Those different plates radiates. Then they also have a water vascular system and tube feet. For regular echinoids, the tube feet are very visible, whereas for the uh, irregular echinoids, they are not uh, visible, but they are present. Then they all have four pairs a mouth and an anus. They also have 
uh, they also possess genital and ocular plates. Note should be taken here that in case, in the course of our lesson, we shall be looking at differences. But as a similarity, the genital plates and the ocular plates are present. They may not be of the same number, but they are present in both fossil species. Now the B part of our question of our lesson requires that we should give characteristic differences between regular and irregular echinoids. Now the specific characteristics that shall guide the development of the different of the differences between regular and irregular echinoids include the position of the mouth and the anus, the symmetry, the apical system, pulpit, then the peristome, the peristome margin, then the position of the anus, tubercles, the nature of the ambulacrum, and then spines. We can also include the fasoid and the plastron. So, the characteristics then. Here, we are tabulating. And on the table, we have features, which are those characteristics that we are going to use to bring out the differences. Then we have regular echinoid first and irregular uh, echinoids follow. Now, based on symmetry, regular echinoids are radial, while irregular echinoids are bilateral. So, regular echinoids have a radial symmetry, and the irregular uh, echinoids have a bilateral symmetry. Based on the position of the mouth and the anus, for regular echinoids, the anus lies within the apical system, while the mouth, the mouth is at the center of the lower surface. But for irregular echinoids, the anus lies outside the apical system, and the mouth is at the anterior margin with jaws. There are some other species that will not have jaws. We take over for the second point, the position of the mouth and the anus. For irregular echinoids in particular, the anus lies outside the apical system, and the mouth at the anterior margin without jaws. Again, remember that we are working on these two photos. The first is for uh, regular echinoids and the second for irregular. The third aspect, the third, the third characteristic we can use is the apical system. Now, for regular echinoids, they have five genital and five ocular plates. So all together they have ten uh, plates. But for irregular echinoids, they have less than five genital plates, but with exactly five ocular plates. So in terms of ocular plates, they are similar, but the difference comes only in the genital plates. The poor, based on the poor pair, the poor pairs in regular echinoids are rounded, whereas for irregular echinoids, they are elongated. That is why they become very invisible, but present. We consider the peristome margin. For regular echinoids, the peristome margin is notched with a gill notch. Whereas for irregular echinoids, 
The peristome is entire with no gill notch. Remember that the notch serves as the position where the organism gathers material during its feeding. Also consider the position of the anus. For regular echinoids, the anus is always on the upper surface, whereas the, for irregular echinoids, the anus may be in the upper or the lower surface. That is what makes it irregular. Then, in the seventh uh, characteristic, we consider the tubercles. For regular echinoids, tubercles vary in sizes from large primary to small granules. Whereas for irregular echinoids, the tubercles are small and uniform in their sizes. Based on the nature of the ambulacrum, regular echinoids have no petaloids in their ambulacrum. Whereas for irregular echinoids, they have an ambulacrum and petaloids. Remember that the petaloids now serve as those penta areas that gives the five rate nature of the body for genitals and the oculars. Then, based on the spines, regular echinoids have several uh, size spines. Whereas irregular echinoids have uniform size spines. The rule of the spines is to help anchor the organism, especially in the boring position. Remember that there are some cases that will have a deep growth that will permit deep borrowing kind of life, whereas some have a shallow growth <coughs> which permits shallow borrowing or thriving in shallow marine environments. Other characteristics that could be used to differentiate regular echinoids from irregular echinoids involve the plastron. The plastron is absent in regular echinoids. But in the irregular echinoid, it plays an important role. So it is present. Then, the fast oil in regular echinoid is absent. But for irregular echinoid, it is present and also plays a vital role, especially with the microstar forms. So, picture wise, the fossil type that we are using for regular echinoids is Cindaris, whereas for irregular echinoid is uh, Microsta. Remember the heart shape and the rounded shape. Now recall that regular and irregular echinoids are characterized based on the peripod and the peristome, the peristome, and that they have a five-rate arrangement of their body parts. The corona plate and the water vascular system plays a role and differentiate the two from, uh, differentiate the two into regular and irregular. They also contain two feet as well as Poor pair, not poor pairs. It is a poor pair because there are only two. So they are grouped into two. Then, the four genital and ocular plates. Remember that four genital plates, four irregular. But for regular, they have five. Regular and irregular echinoids differ based on 
their body symmetry, their position of mouth and angles, the apical system and pope, the peristome, uh, the peristome margin, and the position of the anus. Then the tubercles and nature of the ambulacrum. And then we have the spines and also add the fast oil and the plastum. We look at some exercises to see if our lesson information was driven home. The first exercise, number one, targets our uh, hypothesis. So as we go through it, we will see which of the hypotheses is correct. What resolved or what re revealed the differences between the fossils observed by the petroleum engineer in the Bakasi Peninsula? A. The effect of denudational agents on the fossils. B. The idea of gaps in fossil records. C. The morphological and ecological aspects of the fossils. From our lesson, which was focused at the similarities and differences between uh, uh, regular and irregular echinoids, the characteristics which we use to either give the similarities or the differences were all focused on morphological and ecological aspects of the fossil. So the C option is correct. Therefore, to bring differences between fossil types, like it was the case of the petroleum engineer, morphological features as well as ecological aspects are very important. Number two, the coronal plate in regular and irregular echinoids constitutes a ambulacrum and interambulacrum. B. Five red arrangements. C. Peripod and peristrum. D. Water vascular system. Our correct answer is A. The corona plate in regular and irregular echinoids constitute the ambulacrum and the entire ambulacrum. Exercise 3. Poor pair in echinoids most likely identifies A. The apical system. B. Ambulacral plate. C. Interambulacral plate. And D. Peristome. Remember that ambulacra is the plural form. They are many. When they are just single, we call them ambulacrum. The correct answer is. B. Poor pair in echinoid most likely identify ambulacra plate. Number four, body symmetry in regular echinoid is most likely described as A. Bilateral. B. Hemispherical. C. Unilateral. D. Radial. Correct answer is D. Body symmetry in regular echinoids, echinoids is most likely described as radial. So the symmetry is radial. For irregular echinoid, we emphasize that it was bilateral. Number five. Peristone. The peristone margin in irregular echinoids is A. Notched. B. Entire. C. Rounded. D. Elongated. Remember that we use the peristome to make a difference between regular and irregular echinoids. So our correct answer is B. The peristome margin in irregular echinoid is entire. It is not notched. We shall take this assignment and while at home, we'll try to develop the answers. Number one, 
state two similarities between regular and irregular echinoids. Two, state seven characteristic differences between regular and irregular echinoids. While at home, you make an attempt, and you can visit the text for a geology advanced level, as well as the fundamentals of geology. It will guide you in your approach, and also to read more on a kind of the matters. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will, will be on description of fossils 10, where we shall focus on phylum echinodermata. We will concentrate on class crinoidum. See you in our next class. Unna tege si ma tege yob, unna tege minga ma tege nyum, unna tege majang ma tege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 